Welcome to another edition of the Rock Fantasy Files, and we're here and, and pleasing with uh, we're going to be talking about the band Hellstar, and we have a representative from the band. And please introduce yourself, James. Uh, hi there, I'm uh, James Vampiro Rivera. Vampiro, yes, that's yeah, very well, nice. That, and now some people, it's just Vampiro. James Rivera is just gone. <laughs> You know, Vampiro. Yes. All right. Very good. So we have a vampire in the room today. And there was a wrestler, uh, Vampiro, that yeah. was very famous in AAA wrestling for years. And I believe still. I was going to put the fangs on for the interview, but I thought, ah, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, sounds like a cool gimmick. So uh, not a gimmick, but, you know, a cool, a cool thing. And uh, we're going to talk about an album. That, uh, there was a release you guys put out. It's already out. Uh, it came out April April 2nd of 2021 on Massacre Records, uh, entitled Clad in Black. And yeah. uh, I I guess let's hear about the new album. I know it's a new LP and you also have a reissue in this same package and tell us all about it, please. Yeah, well, um, what uh, what we did on this, in this situation when we uh, re-signed with the Germans uh, on Massacre, um, I had a different, game plan for Hellstar. Um, it's been almost five years now since the last release and, and every release is either two or three years. And um, there's an old saying, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And that's just the way things always happened. And then this time around, I said, you know, look, we, we don't, we don't have much time left on this earth to continue uh, delivering what we deliver with quality, you know? So that's mm -hmm. my main my main concern is that every Hellstar record comes out, sounds better than the last, and that people will go, wow, the band sounds even better now that they're 50 years old, <laughs> 50 years in the business. I mean, not 50 years old. I wish I was 50 years old again, but, you know, so uh, in this case, I wanted to um, find some way to sort of keep the name a little bit more out there so that people will you know, always constantly be going, oh, Hellstar, Hellstar, even if oh, you yeah. hate us, it's like, I mean, even if you love us, like, oh, God, you know, stop, you know, another thing. So the master plan was to put out a single for the first time in our lives ever. And oh. what big metal band never did seven inch singles with some cool cover or something? Yeah, yeah, it's soul. I mean, Iron Maiden is the most famous for that, you know, I mean, and then, uh, you know, a cover <laughs> song on the other side. And then that took place. And then I, I uh, explained to the label. And then the next thing we do is we put out an EP and we release two more new songs along with the new song that was the single to begin with. We do three more covers. And because the album Vampiro uh, was one of the best works we've done since our historical Nosferatu in 1989 yeah, yeah. and all going back to vampirism and Dracula and the whole nine yards, that I felt that it needed, um, it needed to be exposed on a bigger level than it was because uh, even when I started doing interviews for this, um, I can count it on on one hand, not that many. There were some people that said, "Dude, I didn't even know about Vampiro," and I I just luckily found it, and they're like, "Oh my God, was it an incredible record?" So awesome. that alone, right there, was telling me I was um, I was making a right move on the chessboard by going, look, uh, that album was too good. It needs to be exposed again at its fullest that it can be. And from what I'm understanding now, people that, that already had it, they're okay with getting it again. But people that never had it are like, man, I'm so glad I bought this DigiPack because cool, cool. I didn't even get this and this is incredible. You know, so that's what the whole EP was, the, the purpose of doing it that way. Then a full length record is in the works too. So okay. you see, I'm keeping, yeah. And uh, so now I'm keeping the Hellstar in your face. Even if you love me, you'll probably hate me at some point. Like not that guy again, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's a way to just keep the name out there, especially since we were uh, sh shackled in chains from touring. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, like, we, like everyone is now. Now all of a sudden it looks like the gates are opening and we gotta keep our fingers crossed that this keeps the, forward trend in the states here at least that uh there was a bunch of tours just got announced in the last few days and let's hope i know. Yeah, so but uh let's talk a little bit about 
the new, uh, I guess, it, so yeah, it's an EP that comes out along with this. And uh, you did some, uh, maybe we can break down a couple of the new songs. I did check out the video for Black Wings of Solitude uh, early this morning when I found out that we were going to do this interview to try to refresh my memory a little bit with you guys, because it's been a long time since I've listened to the band, I have to have to say. And it's, uh, I'm going to have to check out some of the stuff that you were just talking about. I remember selling like you know your early albums in my store because I opened in 1985. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, the record shop has been here since then, and I remember selling. And I remember like Robin mentioned like Hellstar, I'm like wow, they're still around. And now, you know, I'm helping to spread that word too because there might be some other people that weren't aware and that I don't even know who they are because we might have some viewers that uh, aren't aware of the band. And uh, let's talk a little bit about. The, the new songs and maybe a, a couple of the covers that seem pretty interesting too and uh talk about that and then of course we'll talk a little bit about the history of the band as we go through the interview of course oh yeah definitely um uh, as far as the new songs uh, well you know uh since vampiro came you know since we when we wrote vampiro it was actually like almost like my uh, biggest christmas present that uh, the other main and co-founder of Hellstar, Larry Berrigan, we've still been together after all these years. Nice. But we're the only two originals. Um, you know, he, he's the one that came up with the concept of Nosferatu in 1989. Yeah. And then years had passed. He even, you know, he even had uh, stepped out of the band for a long time. But then when he came back, so when we came, came time to write Vampiro, he, it's almost like he gave me a Christmas present. He goes, dude, I want to do another record of my vampires. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. But this time, the whole album. And it's just, I mean, I was like, a, like I said, I was like a kid at Christmas because that's my favorite subject of yeah. everything. And so with that going on, you know, we, we that whole album was definitely all about it's either one dracula movie or another or a tale of a vampire or you nice. know elizabeth bathory it's 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 all combination but everything has to do with the undead you know yeah, yeah. so <laughs> uh, with clad in black uh, black wings of solitude was written and and it, and it kind of has three different meanings but since i lean towards the vampirism um you know it, it it's about a, a it's it's about a vampire who wants to become mortal because he falls in love with the mortal okay and he uh he loves her so much that he can't turn her so you know so <laughs> kind of a weird romantic okay. song not yeah, as corny yeah. as like the movie's twilight or anything but okay. you know yeah so and you know so that's my spin on it his spin on it is about a friend that died from cancer Oh. You know, a, a good friend of all of ours, Bruce Corbett. Okay. So, and okay. then it's also, there's another spin on it about a person that just has an addiction. So, okay. so, but in my case, you know, I, I leaned it more towards the lonely vampire, you know, that, mm -hmm. and it's, if you notice at the end of the video, since you said you saw it, yeah. you see him walking away, you know, in, into yeah. the sunset, like, you know, Hey, that's, that's his lonely life that he's got to mm -hmm. live because mm -hmm. he, can't turn that mortal to be like him so yeah. <laughs> right and then um the other song uh the opening song on the ep dark incarnation is about an evil satanic witch that larry uh, sent me this movie and we started oh. writing about it now that has, has nothing to do with a vampire but if you if you if you if you let me put my spin on it yeah but it's dracula's cousin yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I always find a way to get tied in, <laughs> tie in the vampirism in some sense or another. Yes. And then you got the other song that's called Across the Rage and Sea. One guy, dude, gave me the best uh, impression of what he thought and made me really happy. He goes, when I told him what the song was about, he goes, oh, man, I thought it was about the ship that brought Dracula from Transylvania to London when in the book. And I go, dude, I like that. So we can go on that one, too, if you really like. Yeah, but yeah. it's actually simply about the Japanese kamikaze pilots. And oh, okay. so was, right. So it has nothing to do with the vampirism. Although <laughs> if you ask me again, I can go, 
you know, yeah, for, uh, but it was Dracula that possessed them that gave them the power to wreck those ships. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, and in any form, uh, I will always somehow tie in vampirism in my lyrics. And so it's kind of like the deal with the band. The band um, has given me the love and support to to say, hey, you know, James is a, a, obviously he's adopted this stage persona and everything about him is being Dracula vamp mm -hmm. slash vampire guy. Yeah, and, yeah. and now we're used to it. We love it. And and so they've given me that freedom. So in, in return, my my way of giving back to them without making everybody think that way and write that way that they can write whatever they want but whatever anything i ever write in hellstar will always be some call somehow vampire related and then the freedom to do other things lyrically about other subjects and stuff you know okay. so that's kind of how what all the new songs are all about so there's but the title of the album still ties in uh everything from vampiro to the cover um mm -hmm. and everything else so you, most people think it is a continuation of Vampiro as well, which it is, okay. but it isn't. Yeah, okay. And uh, the covers, I'm trying to, re I, I read this before, but I've had, a, as we spoke off camera, I've had a hectic day and I didn't get to take all my notes. Looked like you did a cover of After All. That's the Black Sabbath song off the Dehumanizer, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, that's, I, I can't wait to ch check that out because I, I think that's such a strong song and uh, I love that that Black Sabbath album. I thought the Humanizer was such a strong comeback with getting Dio back in the band. And I could only have wished that we got at least another another album out of Dio with Sabbath in that time period. I mean, we did end up getting Heaven and Hell later on. And uh, what was the other cover? Was it Accept, Restless and Wild? Yes, yeah. Cool, cool. And is there another cover too that I forgot yes. about? Yes, uh, Sinner, Judas Priest. Oh, yeah. So three great songs of course yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh that's it so that's the whole ep part of uh, clad in black excellent and uh let's talk a little bit about the history of the band for uh the, i mean, have some viewers that may just be stopping you know stumbling over hellstar for the first time even though you've been around since what what year did you start uh, the Jap when when did the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor? I'm trying to remember now. Oh my God, 1941. <laughs> you, were, you were the first. Yeah, that means. yeah it's yeah, now we've been around right. since. Well, technic technically, we at the nucleus of Hellstar, which is me and Larry Berrigan. We have been yeah. together since 1982. Yeah. Um, and of course, we started out as a heavy metal cover band and you call it the garage days backyard yeah. party days blah 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 yeah, and yeah these are the covers that we were playing anyways so it made sense for us to put them on the record nice uh but yeah for officially as a real band in the world with the first release was 1984 when burning star came out okay and i opened my store in 85 so i'm very familiar with that album and the next couple after i'm sure we had in stock at the shop and uh yeah, it's a it's a long history, and it's good to see you guys are still plugging away and getting at it. And it sounds like you're doing some exciting things. And I I got to check it out and check out the new album. Is it available on CD and on vinyl, or is it yep. uh, and digital too? All three. Yep, I, all three. You can get it any way you want it. All right, good, good. Well, and, hey, uh, that's a journey song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't cover that one, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Next cover on the next Hellstar. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I, I, don't get me wrong. I love, I love Steve Perry and Journey, but I just think that we would never be able to cover any of their songs and make them sound. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Wheel in the Sky, but yeah, that would still, that'd be still be pushing it. Yeah. Edge of the Blade. Fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> Journey. That's a good one. Now, now you're talking. Yeah. I think that's the heaviest. I didn't think about game. that one. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm you know, a closet journey fan a little bit too. I didn't really like him in the 80s. It was like the chick fan. And but uh, as a, as they gone on, I and I grew actually went to see uh Steve Miller band and Journey a few years ago. I'm up by the original Woodstock site, that's the Woods Amphitheater. And me and one of my employees at the time, we went, we were going to Steve Miller. I never saw Steve Miller. I dug the old stuff and man, Journey came out and they smoked the place. But, oh, uh, God, yeah. Yeah, I know. But anyhow, we're way off subject. We're talking about Journey now. We're talking yeah, 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 it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
So uh, as we go back in time, what was an album or a band, some of your influences, an album or a band that kind of changed your life and said, I want to get into this. And I want, I heard this and I want to perform or I want to, you know, I want to be metal and all that good stuff. You know, um, that question is actually easier to answer, but yet at the same time, it's kind of like, yeah, just don't, you know, cause you, there were so many bands at that time that, Yes, it really motivated me to actually pick up a microphone. But okay. I think it's when I was introduced to the album taken by Force by Scorpions. Nice, and choice. that's when I decided that I want to be a singer in a band. But you know, mm -hmm. then I, I, it only took a matter of a, a week, and then I was introduced to uh, Stained Class, and then I was introduced yeah. to long live rock and roll and then oh, then all those singers and all that stuff yeah possess me at that point my life was ruined yeah <laughs> or made better or made better. yeah well, you know yeah i mean yeah it, it was it was ruined from looking for a real career let's put it that way what were some of the uh, maybe concerts or tours with Hellstar that are very memorable? Anything you'd like to share today with that? Or any crazy? Oh, man. Well, you know, all, a lot of the tours we did, like, you know, we toured with uh, Megadeth was our first U.S. tour in 1985. I probably saw you then on that tour. I bet yeah, you. it was Peace Cells, and we were tour touring uh, on the, uh, the release of Remnants of War was just about to come out, mm -hmm. which is our second album. And then we toured with Anthrax when the second album came out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Yngwie Malmsteen was our first European tour in 1988. Okay. So a lot of memorable stuff. A lot of, a lot of the big festivals that we did at, when we reunited and got to play with all the big people and, you know, meeting Ronnie James Dio, my hero, and becoming friends. Oh, wow. You know, Klaus Maney got me on stage at Bang Your Head. We did He's a Woman, She's a Man together because it's oh, wow. third Hellstar That's record. That's amazing. Right. And I, you know, I met them. And, and, and so there's a lot of memories of stuff that I did in my life. That I, I can be like, oh. I love it. Is that video on YouTube somewhere? Are you in Klaus? You know what? Anything? I think it is. Uh, you just got to look it up. It's Bang Your Head 2001. 2001. Scorpions okay. was the headliner. And at that time, I was over there with my other opus destinies in that brought me back into the whole metal world in late 1999 oh, okay right like that's when my career started all over again nice and yeah i i look back on those years of like 2000 and some of the shows i went to and like where did those 20 years go to I know. And, you know, <laughs> I look back and go, where did those last 36 years go? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I just turned 60 in October. So it's like, where did it all go? And then, of course, you're locked down and you got a lot of time to think about things right now, you know? Yeah, totally. But uh, it was great having you on today. And I don't know if you'd like to add anything today before we wrap it up. Well, no, I just thank you for the interview, and uh, I'm, I'm tickled to death that uh, more and more are, are popping up just all the time, which is unusual, mm -hmm. uh, but and, and when I say more and more, I'm talking about more and more American interviews. We ha yeah. I haven't done this many interviews for Hellstar since the Metal Blade days oh, wow. in the U.S. I mean, yeah. Europe is a given, you know, Europe loves us. We know that we have a home in Europe. Yeah. And I love my European fans, but we do live in America. And for the last 20 years, it, you just, you have a handful of people that are like, oh yeah, Hellstar. But you don't, you know, in this case, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like every week there's two or three and I'm like, wow, what's going on? And I think what it is, is people are going, hey, you know what? They didn't make it like Metallica and Exodus and all like the rest of those guys. Yeah. But they're still together and they kept what they started 36 years ago and still doing it, I think they do deserve to be on that boat and get that same acknowledgement. And that makes me feel good. Excellent. And of course we have a lot of European and actually viewers around the world on this channel, you know, as we yeah. started out, it was very small. I was getting like last summer and my first interview was with Will Carroll, Death Angel. And then they started networking around and you know, those, those first ones were only getting like, ah, should I really keep doing this? We're getting like, 70 views and now you know it's turned around we've been doing very well with the channel yeah. 
of course, the pandemic helped because I had a lot of friends like Robin Mason, who of course set up this interview today from Bruce, and, you know, managing so many bands and John McAtee from Incantation and Will Carroll and Andrew Freeman from Last in Line were all people I knew. And we, hey, who do we want to get next week? And who do we want to talk to? Because every Wednesday night we do uh, band panels where we just pick a band and we talk about what songs we like. Like last night we covered ACDC Bon Scott era. And we also covered Queen last night. So, uh, oh, had, awesome. had Bill Lindsay <laughs> on from Impaler. And he, you know, when I, su I said, oh, yeah, we're getting together tomorrow with Hellstar. And he, he, you know, was talking all about the band because he remembered you guys very well. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, that's good, man. Yeah. And, so uh, we, we're just appreciating everything that's going on right now for us mm -hmm. on this new record. And, you know, like I said, I've known Robin for a long time. Oh, yeah. Maybe she'll finally go, hey, you know what? This poor guy. He's kicked enough mud. Maybe I should manage the Hellstar and get them on yeah. something cool. <laughs> get, you on, get you on the road with Exodus and Death Angel. And all you guys. know, and it basically, if the band was to get a shot at doing even just the Texas dates with someone like Testament yeah. or Exodus, one of those yeah. bands, it would catapult us to a le another level just like that. Because musically, we're there. Uh, yeah. And if you like what you hear on the record, what you hear live is like 500 times more intense. It, we've mm -hmm. always been that kind of band that we can never capture what we really sound like live on record. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird, but we're more of a live band. And, uh, you know, we're also blessed for that. Awesome. Now, uh, how do folks go to find you? Uh, I'm going to put the links in the description of the video so you guys can check it out on there if you want to check out Hellstar. Do you have yeah, a website yeah. we can go to? Or? Well, we're getting a new website finally built. Uh, but yeah, for now, I mean, you can go to the Hellstar Metal uh, Facebook page and that'll take you to everything that we have, you know, that's going awesome. on right now recently. Yeah. And we have, a, uh, we have our own YouTube channel as well. So uh, you, you see a lot of videos and a lot of the videos from the, uh, the actual songs and live videos as well. Since you are very interested in, you know, Dracula and vampires, what's your favorite vampire movie? Vampire movie? Woo, that's a good one. I, you know, to this day, I mean, I've seen them all, and I've seen them all like a hundred times. So yeah, you know, yeah. you probably you probably know that by now. But <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll I'll even make it more simple. My favorite Dracula of all time is Christopher Lee, the Hammer film Dracula movie. Okay, very excellent. Right, and excellent. my favorite movie is Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. That nice. one is the, the yeah it, it that's that movie, I can watch it every day and never get sick of it. <laughs> it's the best. It, it's, it's got to be, yeah, in my book, it is it's it is the best. You know, Scars of Dracula was running close to it, but the more I, I, I looked at it again, I'm like, nah, Dracula has risen from the grave when he falls on the golden cross right through his heart off the, the castle. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that just, and the blood coming out of his eyes. And, <laughs> and and the whole thing I loved about Christopher Lee is he never really talked much at all in any of the movies. He either no, just smiled, yeah. but in that movie, he did say one thing, and that's when he's dragging that girl from the village up to the castle. She's in her nightgown, and the priest and her boyfriend, they went and they put that big golden cross in front of his door so he couldn't go in. <laughs> and then he, he walks up and he sees it, and he goes, ah, he gets all pissed yeah. off, and he goes take that thing out of my sight and that's all he said to the whole movie that thing take that thing out of my sight <laughs> and she's the one that removes it and throws it and then it it yeah it, you know hollywood it just so happens to land standing straight yeah. up so <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing and i yeah. i have to rewind that part a lot you know <laughs> Yeah, those Hammer films were so great, and of course, I grew up with the Universal Monsters with you know Boris, yeah, Lugosi and everything. And uh, speaking of, like, I was in a discussion earlier today about a movie, and I saw some of the stuff you were from Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula, and that. Oh yeah, one, that was great too. They made a pinball machine of that, and I owned it for years, and I couldn't get it to work, and I traded it to a guy for a Rolling Stones pinball. He got it working right away, and I'm still without it. And I thought that was one of the best pinball machines ever made. It has so many call outs. It's so <laughs> cool. And it's just a great, it was, you know, it was put out by Bally Williams right around the time that movie came out. And it has so much from that movie. And it was just a great game. And 
maybe one day I'll get it again because we have about 40 pinball machines in the shop. So hopefully we'll actually see each other in person. And I, oh, yeah. We're up here. I love here. that, man. Whenever we get back out on the road and whatever, we'll have to. Uh, we're up here between New York city and poughkeepsie in the middle sort of I'm about to we played poughkeepsie uh on the vampiro tour with flotsam and jetsam that's that's a chance probably the chance. Right? yes we yeah, did yeah i know thank you the chance you know we work a lot of uh, promotions there the chance is still closed now oh. but i think it's going to be reopening soon frank is still going to reopen and uh I think he's just waiting. I think now we're getting the capacities and everything. It's probably he's probably just waiting for more national acts to be able to play. Yeah, uh, I mean yeah. that that it makes sense. I mean that's just the whole problem is that we you know, especially for metal shows, um, yeah. where we're we're already an underdog as far oh, as it is in the industry. So yeah, if it's not a hundred percent, then it's not worth really doing shows right now. You know? True, true, true. You know what I mean? So. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, yes. And, up. Uh, thanks horns for up, us, fangs right? down, and Van Peebles will see you soon. It's daytime, so he didn't have his fangs in today. Not if not he did today, this after yeah. dark, then the fangs could come in. They're actually getting whitened at the dentist right now. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the few vampires that, that does worry about my smile, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, if you like the channel and you like what you saw today, please take a moment and subscribe, hit like, you know, okay. join in the discussion on there and uh, mention your favorite Hellstar songs or favorite moments you've seen Hellstar in the comments. And uh, we'll be back again soon. I wish you all, uh, you know, success in the world of getting back thank on the, with the with the new uh, album and the reissue. Thank all you. Right? And, and tell Robin, I said, thank you very much for making this happen, too. And I'll be in touch with her soon. All right. All right. Thank you. God bless. Good Stay night, safe, everyone. buddy.